French philosopher Jacques Derrida had some very interesting things to say about genre that we can apply to Hollywood genres in his essay, The Law of Genre, and I'll be referring to the translation into English by Avital Ronel. In this essay, Derrida is not talking so much about any particular genre, but rather about the concept of genre itself, the study of genre as a scholastic pursuit. So one of the first things Derrida wants to establish is that there is in fact a genre of genres in which two kinds of genre studies are to be found. The first kind of genre study is formalistic or perhaps structuralist in nature. And this kind of genre study is scientific and mathematical. It's all about creating taxonomies and tabulations. It's a study of genre that wants to count all the different kinds of genres and differentiate them from one another using logistical schematics. This kind of approach, Derrida suggests, is an attempt to naturalize the idea of genre, to show that genres are part of nature, something that Northrop Frye might have done as well. And the consequence of suggesting that genres belong to the natural world is really that genres are then subject to the rules of the natural world. So he talks about how people who do this kind of systematic structuralist approach to genre will show how genres can be corrupted or contaminated, deformed, decomposed, perverted, cancerized, degenerated, but ultimately the point being is that genres can be made impure. So in this approach to genre, there's a demand for purity, and Derrida gives the French narratologist Gerard Genet as a kind of, as an example of this kind of purist who really wants distinctions between the genres and works very hard to show how there are pure examples of, say, the mystery genre, where it has boundaries that it can be understood and known with absolute clarity. And for Derrida, what this ultimately leads to is what he calls a binary between do and do not. And so, for example, in a, in a kind of do sense, you could have a Western that has bank heists so long as the bad guys escape using horses and spurs. But if you have uh, some guys robbing a bank and they are escaping in a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost and using Tommy guns, well then, this is a gangster film. So you can only do those things in a gangster film, which is what Derrida means by his language of do and do not. So in this view of genre, we're seeing individual stories as rearrangements of elements within a homogenous set of rules. And for quite some time, this structuralist approach was a very popular way of looking at genre. The second kind of genre study Derrida talks about is perhaps to be called post-structural. And this view of genre is less concerned with these rigid structures and notions of purity, and it's more concerned with the historical reasons lurking behind why certain cultures have developed certain genre structures. Why, for example, does the American film industry invest so much time, energy, and money into making war films? So this post-structuralist approach doesn't really try to show that genre is somehow a natural phenomenon, but it would try to show the process by which genre came to be considered a natural phenomenon. And it wants to think of genre as an artificial construct. And because genre is an artificial construct, genre essentially is a field of narrative exploration that societies establish by way of a compromise towards creating new stories. Genre and the idea of genre and how we play with it, say in Hollywood, it's a kind of agreement to play loosely within established sets of rules, knowing that each film in, say, the science fiction genre will in some way change the way that we see the rules of genre. And it's only because we know the rules of genre that we can actually see the attempts a story is making to branch out from the rules of, say, science fiction. So this is much different than saying that genre is a natural phenomenon, and each genre sort of exists with boundaries that are set in stone and that then can be corrupted with the acid of intermixing with other genres. Instead, this view is saying that genre actually benefits from being intermingled and having those boundaries tested. It's what creates new stories. So the ultimate point here is that genre structures, insofar as they can even said to be exist, they're not only about demarcating limits, but they actually show us the way to breach those limits. In pointing out the difference between these two kinds of approaches to the study of genre, Derrida decides not to really take sides between which one is better or worse. Rather, he says that these two stances, the structuralist and the post-structuralist, they really require one another. It's almost as if these two approaches to genre call, it, call one another into existence. It's a kind of mystical idea. I think he's getting it from Nietzsche. But the point being uh, the idea that you know one thing calls another into existence. 
The point being is really that we learn more about genre by embracing both approaches rather than just focusing on one of them and arguing whether one is better than the other. And it's surprising, but some scholars have been known to do this, to argue for a particular stance and to go to great lengths to demonstrate why that that stance is more correct than another one. Now, although Derrida thinks that we need both views of genre, it's pretty clear that he favors the second, and that's because this second view opens possibilities rather than closing them. And the other point that Derrida wants to stress is that a story can participate in a genre without belonging to it. And this idea connects to another point that Derrida talks about in The Politics of Friendship and in many of his other writings. And namely, this is the idea that we as democratic systems, sorry, <laughs> we as democratic citizens participate in the state without belonging to it as a subject. We're agents within a system who have at least some freedom to act as we will, and we can even use the surrounding framework to supplement and enhance our freedoms. And yet, as the, at the same time as a person cannot belong to a nation or a country, so is it impossible for a story to exist without a genre. So in the case of genres, there are really too many kinds of genre for any story to belong to just one of them. So essentially what a genre theorist does, right or wrong, is to collapse multiple possibilities into a single purpose when they're trying to identify what genre a particular film is. And they're tending to confirm and affirm the needs of the person or the groups of persons in charge of naming the genre, be it economic or political reasons, or just for the purpose of pleasure alone. We are creating use value by putting these rigid categories onto the stories that we see. So genre, whether natural or constructed, always serves a purpose. <laughs>